Hello and welcome back to the Balling Sisters. And today we have got some breaking news about a few hours back. And the breaking news which is there is that Thomas Tuchel, after five games in charge for Chelsea and yesterday's loss against Zagreb, has been kicked out. Now, the question for all Chelsea fans is, what next? Is the Americans, Todd Bowley and Consortium, the right deal? My thoughts on these are a few. First of all, did I feel that Thomas Tuchel was on his way out? Yes. Did I feel that this is the Chelsea which we I have seen for the past 25 years I have been watching football? No. Is this the kind of transfer which is there? No. Is this the cover-up which Todd Boley and his team, which were not clinical enough to give the right transfers to the club like Chelsea? Yes. Was Thomas Tuchel a collateral damage to a certain extent? So why did Thomas Tuchel get the sack? Everybody, I've, I've, I have my football groups, I've got my friends in football, some Manchester United fans, and you've heard me saying this. Manchester United, Newcastle, I've got a lot of friends of mine and, uh, and my Chelsea uh, and, and my Chelsea fan club as well. I have, I've been, I've been reading a lot of chats and my thoughts are the same. The first thing when the news broke out was that is he, is it this, this is too early for Thomas Tuchel to be sacked. Five games in, six games in, uh, pre-season didn't go according to plan. Yes, it did. Because there was a lot of, a lot of animosity I could feel. Players were not performing. You had the, the most non-performing player on the field yesterday, if any, all the Chelsea fans or anybody who watched UFC last night, was uh, Ziyech, Hakim Ziyech, the most, uh, the person who didn't want to perform. You had Pulisic on the other side, not performing, rusty as fuck. You had uh, you had uh, a person like Callum Achard, right? now it's going on level two. So sacks are happening all across left, right, and centre. It's not just Chelsea. Leipzig also, I believe, has sacked the manager after last night. Only Chelsea is in the storm because it is the English club, one of the top 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 English clubs. But what 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 happened? What went wrong for Chelsea? What went wrong was the following: first, transfers didn't go according to plan. Players started to lose interest in it. This is the same team which Thomas Tuchel, more or less the same team which Thomas Tuchel took, took over. You had lost the likes of Rudiger, you lost Richardson, you you kicked out Lukaku after a world record fee, you lost Tani Abraham, who was a good who's a good prospect, you sold him. Lukaku was on loan. Then you've loaned out uh, a majority of players or sold them off. Then you've got uh, this guy uh, uh, Callum Hudson Odoi who's gone uh, gone out on loan. People have gone out alone, and for, for Chelsea, this is very, very normal that you're bringing in players. But why has Chelsea brought in subpar players? I have been crying it out loud on my channel as well. On my, my me and sister have been crying it out loud that this is. And when I was doing this transfer, when I did the 20 teams, and I'll, I'll link the link in the description as well, as well as you see the card coming up over here. When I was talking about Chelsea, I said Chelsea only aspires to get the best. A triple A player, triple A level, triple A grade. Now, what is happening is that only double A grade, the double grade players, Sterling, not the right person. Aubameyang, not the right person. You got in, uh, uh, you got in Kalubali, a good defender, but giving him a three year contract doesn't seem sense. Uh, then who else is now? Fofana, a young lad, yet to be proven. You got Kukurela, yet to be proven. One season in the Premier League, we spent out or gone out and spent 50, 50 million bucks on it. 70 to 60 plus odd million bucks on Fofana. I really don't know. Is it the right thing? As as a fan for football and forget football as a, as, as a fan for Chelsea Football Club as well, I've watched this game. Uh, let me tell you this. That this is not the right way. I've always said that under the Roman Abramovich era, even when I didn't have a channel, this is not the right way. Hiring and sacking, but that has always worked for Chelsea. And to, if I have to give the benefit of the doubt, I will give the benefit of the doubt to Todd Boley. I may be under-reprimanded. I'll be reprimanded left, right and center in my comment section and as well on the social media. But let me tell you this. I'll give you a very simple example. And Chelsea is not a corporate structure, but Todd Boley is a businessman. When he came on board to the club, he is not Roman Abramovich. He doesn't treat this club as what Roman Abramovich did. 
what he roman did was he treated this club as his own as his own kid and if you had to back him it, he did if you had to sack people he did and he sacked people at the lowest because that was required but right now what i am looking at that is not the right thing because what i am looking at is todd bowley as a businessman has taken over an organization called the chelsea football club he spent about 3.75 billion on it he's done stock taking which should have been done a long time back if he's ready to spend about 200 uh, almost 300 billion 300 billion uh, in the transfer window you ought to give the person a chance but when the cl- you give a chance to the person who uh, when you see people fighting for him on the pitch there was there were walking dead people on that pitch you name me one person who was fighting for him apart from one person if you want my one person it was only one it was reese james no mount no kante injured no jorginho not fighting you got kovacic injured kepa has not been the uh, kepa doesn't play mendy has been atrocious the backline have been atrocious you just got about 59 minutes of uh, of a 30 year old uh, of a man who's more or less on his last legs is not that lethal striker you got a selfish son of a bitch called the sterling what do you think you are covering your tracks and coming on to what i was talking about not not bowling giving him the benefit of the doubt on what levels all right fine you you taken over an organization called as chelsea you done that you spent about 300 million you sacked the manager you are doing two things one that you're covering your tracks for the wrong transfers which you've done number 2 you've taken over an organization called the chelsea football club you've taken the stock and then you say okay fine i don't need a b c d e but that is also done by any organization about 8 months into once that takeover is completed the merger is completed then you start firing people but here four months in spent about 300 billion which i believe is gutter money which has gone down the gutter i don't see any money getting coming back from this bofano is a good thing to kerala to sort next time we i got chilwell as well so we we got backup for him other than that sterling useless kolubali is a beast but then how long will he last i really don't know but is he the right defender right now okay maybe but as he wear his heart on the street for chelsea football club no i'll rate i i'll put uh, aspilicueta over kolubali any day but again aspilicueta is also also on his last legs so on that note i really don't see this thing happening what next now the fans are asking what next for chelsea football club as we speak and as i record this video let me tell you there are four names in the bucket those four names are pochettino mauricio pochettino former psg sacked july you've got uh, zidane not been working for almost a year and a half i don't see him coming at all then you've got uh, bisla who is also there but i don't see him again coming he is the least of all you've got graham potter of which chelsea has actually got permission to speak to from brighton and albion and if the clauses are met and everything is there brighton and hove is, is a club which never stands in between anybody if you give them the right amount he is always going to be and grand potter and for a club like chelsea i've never seen chelsea promote a young manager let alone talent a talent getting promoted happened in when when chelsea got that transfer ban other than that chelsea was always buying it was loan army apart from that if you look at it when we had a few good people coming in apart from it i have never seen chelsea coming in for a non known person and graham potter is a young manager he is not a proven manager he has done well for brian uh, brighton and hope no no a non offense to uh, graham potter but is he the right fit maybe he is but currently the stance which chelsea has had earlier and things which have they have done now i don't see a path ahead for graham potter as well if he comes in brilliant for chelsea but it is going to be a very very sad sad thing for brighton and hope to to the position which he has got got them in plays brilliant football plays attractive football the kind of people he has right people he works in a limited budget but then when you pick up somebody from a small club and put it in it is a disaster a recipe for disaster an example david moyes everton to manchester united it was a disaster even though it was a different scenario that was a disaster and this is coming out to be brewing the best bloody disaster in town as you have zidane is there you got pochettino you got graham potter you got bisla and uh, a couple of more managers out maybe out there ole gunnar solskjaer is also out there the united fans were 
saying bring in ole bring in ole but i really don't see that happening Graham Potter number one, Pochettino number two. I don't see. Uh, I don't like Pochettino very honestly. My personal opinion. I don't like. I don't get the vibes from him. Zidane if comes in. He's a. Uh, he 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 doesn't like those things. The only oh, the only golden medal for him, and he doesn't want to spoil his. Uh, he uh, spoil his merit is that he's won three Champions League back to back, and he's after that he only won a Copa, uh, Super Copa, and a Spanish League since when he came back to Real Madrid again after about eight months. There was nothing else. I don't see Zidane coming in. He's put his foot up. He's relaxing. He's earned money. Or he's some director of any or some organization or some uh, football club. Apart, apart from that, nothing. So for me, Chelsea Football Club is at its weakest. And if they don't resort, this is war, my friends. Chelsea friends, this is war. And it is an internal war. You need fire extinguishers. Graham Potter might be a stopgap. Players who've come in are stopgap players. They are not the right players. I will be first. I will be an ecstatic. I will be a very ecstatic Chelsea fan when I'm telling you this that if he comes in, Graham Potter comes in, I'll be very ecstatic. But is he a stopgap? Yes, he is. Will he stay for six years? No, he won't. Because Todd Bowley means business. He thinks he is the next Roman Ibrahimovic, which he is not. Unfortunately, he's an American businessman who's here to run Chelsea Football Club and he's going to run it as a business because he's invested 3.75 billion. He wants his return of investment. If he doesn't see that, you're out of here. He's not going to think twice about it. The major concerns in the club, you need a DOF. There is no DOF. You just got a commercial director. But then further on, what do you have? There's no DOF. There's no somebody who's going to be pulling the plugs, who has that control in the transfers. Somebody who's scared of. The club no. There's nothing of that sort. So there is this Chelsea Football Club is a disjoint bloody club right now. You can go down in the comments and say I am wrong. Abuse the fuck out of me. I don't care. But this is what it is. This is the sad truth. After sacking of Thomas Tuchel, I feel that there is no path ahead as of now. Grand Potter, a good manager, but a stop back, a stop cap affair. A true fact. On that note, thank you very much. Do like, share, subscribe, enable those notifications and share it with your Chelsea fans as to what you think about my thoughts are. And I'll be back for the next one. Adios, guys.